Hi and welcome back to the channel. This time I'm trying to take the 15 minutes I have and build a really small blog engine. I'm going to use uh, as the framework the, the Dancer, the Pearl Dancer framework that you can see here, pearldancer.org. Uh, and I'm going to use obviously Padre and uh, the Strawberry, Padre and Strawberry uh, distribution. So I'm going to use it on Windows. So what we need is, uh, let's start uh, Strawberry Pearl uh, Padre. We need an editor and when we open it, it's, we are going to get an empty page. Uh, Dancer comes with an, a command line application that will allow us to build a skeleton of the application. So, uh, for this, I need to uh, run uh, cmd and uh, let's say change the directory to the work directory. And here I'm going to create the skeleton. So, I type in Dancer minus A and the name of the application, which uh, uh, I picked Dreamer uh, as the name. Uh, it's some kind of uh, magician or whatever, so I'm going to call this uh, application Dreamer. It's, uh, running this script will uh, create the subdirectory for uh, the application and then various files that are the skeleton of the application. If I go into this directory, I can type in Perl, bin and the name appl and run the application. Now this already runs the, the skeleton and I can switch to the browser and uh, type in localhost 3000 and it will bring up the default page that Dancer created for me. How does it look like? So I go back to Padre and open the, the file. If I open the file, uh, the, the file is, uh, if I recall, it's in work, uh, Dreamer, and then there was the bin directory appl. So you can see that the, the script itself is almost empty. It only loads the Dreamer module. Uh, the Dreamer module is in the lib directory. Now in order to see it better, uh, let's open the project browser and Padre automatically recognized the project, the Perl project. So it's in the lib directory, there is the Dreamer PM and here is the application. So this defines that there is a, uh, that when the user comes in with a get request, to the main page, then this subroutine should be executed, which just loads the index template. The templates are located in the views subdirectory, so index TT is the uh, template. Uh, but we, uh, Dancer comes with a really simple template system, but I already installed uh, because the template toolkit uh, that comes with, uh, with uh, Padre and Strawberry Pearl. So what the first thing I would like to do is change the, the template system. Uh, that I can do in the config YAML file that's in the root directory of uh, the application. Here you will see that uh, there is the template which is the simple template and uh, I would like to use the template toolkit and even there uh, I've defined that uh, the encoding is UTF-8. Uh, now the start tags and the end tag I'll leave it as the default in, in Dancer uh, which, is, uh, which looks uh, like this. Uh, so uh, I'll leave it like that. Now I configured that, uh, I would like to see that it's still working. So I stop the application, restart it and go back to the browser to see that it's still working. What we saw earlier that there are all kind of values here that are coming from, from the uh, template system. So I reload it, I still get the same thing, still get the same data, everything is okay. Now. I don't need all this uh, stuff that's in the default uh, view of Dancer, so I go into the index te template, I delete everything, and instead of that, I write hello, and um, I tell the user to go to this page uh, to create a post, create a post. Okay, so that's uh, what I'm going to do, and um, if now we reload the page, then that's what we have here. Hello, and then a link to create a post, which should lead us to the page, uh, page whatever. Uh, when I click on it, I get a 404 error, because no one defined yet what to do if someone gets to this page. And that's what the next thing we have to do. So we go back to the module and define when someone get, sends a GET request to this page, then call the subroutine which is implemented here and load the template which is called page in our case. That we have to still implement that 
uh, template so we go back to the index dt and uh, save it now as page and in their page I would like to instead of this code uh, I would like to have a form the form is going to send in the request with the post method because we are posting something and has an input field uh, which is uh, called title right and then we also have uh, another uh, input field which is uh, of type submit and in between yes there is a text area text area where we are going to type in uh, the text so this is the the page now if i go uh, and reload the application then well oh there is an again error yeah so semicolon seems to be missing that's a standard error i make here in the module yes this one so at the end we should never forget the semicolon here even though it looks like a subroutine but it's actually a parameter parameter to the get function now i can go and uh, run it again and it works better thanks uh, so i can go back to the page and reload this and you get the form which is a bit broken here uh, so let's me let's try to make it a bit nicer i go back into the editor into the this template and first of all let's make it uh, a little bit wider uh, and then put a break at the end and make this text area also let's say have uh, 10 rows and uh, let's have 80 columns so it will be the same size and then uh, also the submit button is a bit instead of submit query let's uh, put there a value which is post and then if I reload now the page then it looks way better even though the 80 here and the 80 here are not the same strange I never understood that one uh, probably someone of some of you will explain it to me and then there's the post uh, button and sort of looks okay uh, as the first version um, so now if I type in uh, some kind of a title and uh, some kind of uh, my text then uh, well let's say something else let's say hello 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 uh, and I click on post then uh, I get some three it, it's it's getting uh, not not good so it's, it's sending in the the title in and that doesn't send in the text uh, let's see what what did I wrong so uh, I didn't give a name for it first for example so I need to give a name to this one it's called test and it's met do it's met old so I have to make fix these uh, issues and then I can come back here reload the whole page and then I see let's see hello and this would be in like let's see world and if I click on post then I get an error that's much better now why did I get this error I got this error because this is a post request and not a get request which is okay that's what I wanted but I didn't write here what to do when, when, I, when we reach a, a post request so I want to define it and I say if I get a post request to this page then call this other subroutine which does something uh, different so what does this oh i don't forget the semicolon so what does this do uh, this needs to get the params method and from there to fetch the title value and the first thing let's see just return this one so i stop this restart the application and see again if I reload the page and resend the data then I get back hello which is what the title I, I, I wrote so that's okay that works now we need to save it somewhere I could use some kind of a database but I wanted to make it more simple in this case so I am going to use a JSON file now where is the JSON file we have to define it in the configuration file in the configuration file I type in Dreamer which is the name of the application uh, and then uh, and be below this I will save all the data of the application and then uh, let's say I call the field JSON and put there the name of the file where I'm going to I'm going to use save all the data so this this file is going to be my database uh, and how do I get this uh, data I type in config and this function gets me all the configuration data 
Uh, and here I, I can type in the key value keys. And there it has two keys, so I get this is the name of the file where the uh, data is going to be. So I put it into a variable, just uh, so I have it uh, make it simple. Uh, I put it in a variable, then I need to read in the data from that file. So I read, type in read file and the name of the file, and put this into a variable. But this data is going to be JSON, right? Because there, what we're saving there is JSON. So I put it into a variable I call JSON. And then I still have to turn this data into a Perl data structure. So from JSON is the function that will take the JSON strict string and return uh, the data we need. So this is a data structure. Now, obviously, the first time we run this, we won't have a JSON file there. And in that case, we just want to have an empty hash to be returned. The way we can do this is we can check whether there is the file if it exists. And if it does, then we call read in the file. If it doesn't, then we just return a string with two curly braces, which is the way JSON uh, defining an empty hash. So that's how we get uh, an empty JSON there and then the data, and now we just have to add the new piece of, uh, new, new uh, blog entry. For this, we first of all, we take the timestamp. So we have a new variable called now, and I put in a timestamp, and then add to this data, uh, now is going to be the key. So we are saving the uh, pieces of uh, blog entries according to the timestamp they have, and here I can add the title, and I co I'll just take it from here because I don't need it there anymore. And uh, I also have the text from the user, and this is from the params text. And that's it. Now we have the data, the new blog entry in the data, and we just have to save it, which is using the write, write file, uh, giving the name of the file, and the data. Now the data is, is a, a Perl data structure and we want to save it as a JSON, so we have to convert it to JSON. And that's it. Now when, once it's done, we want to save this thing. We want to, sorry, we want to show something to the user and we want to redirect the user, redirect the user to the root, to the, just to the main page. Now on the main page we don't yet show that the content is, but let's see what how does this work. So for this to work, I'll have to stop the application again and start it again. And if I didn't make any mistakes, then it might even work. So this is the uh, form, I fill it in, and then I click post, and I get a runtime error. So this is the error. Oh, can't look at object method write file. Well, obviously, because uh, the from JSON and the to JSON functions are part of Dancer, but the read file and the write file are not. So we have to load a module that will provide them. Use file um, slurp is the name of the module, and it provides a read file and a write file function. So I save them. Now I have to restart the application because I changed the code and uh, try this again. So I go back and post it again and here we are. So it says it's okay. It returned to uh, the root uh, web page, the main web page, but I don't see any uh, data yet. So let's see first of all if the data was saved. And go back to Padre and uh, I go back in the work directory. We said that the Dwimmer JSON is going to be there and here we are. So there is the timestamp and the text and the title we wanted to save. So it seems that it's saving into the file. Now let's uh, let's try to display it on the web page. Uh, for this we go uh, to the main uh, page and here what we need is to read in the data again. Uh, just the same way as we did it here. So the simplest thing now is just to copy paste this data. Uh, and then we have all the data in this uh, variable called dollar data and we would like to send it as a parameter to the template so we just send in uh, as a parameter to the template in the template let's see what's in the template so this is the page 
here is the index template. So in the template, uh, we would like to show uh, the data, uh, which is actually uh, now we, that's a hash. So how do we fetch a hash in the template toolkit and display to the user? In template toolkit, it's a, it's a generic uh, thing. So you have a for loop, and then you put in a variable, which is, let's say, uh, um, a page. And then that's in, uh, and we have the data, right? The data is a hash, so we have to fetch the keys of it, a dictionary also called, and we would like to make them sorted, so we sort them. And that's the way to go over all the elements in this hash. And then we end it this way. Inside, now I can display uh, the actual content of this variable called p, which is going to be the timestamp. Now if I go back to the, uh, I have to restart this because I just changed the code as well. So if I reload this page, then we, have, we see the timestamp of the only post we had. Now that's not really nice, we would like to see the title and the content. The way to do this in the template toolkit is to say that I would like to print the data and then the p is now a variable, so I put a dollar sign in front of it and the title key of it. And after that, we would like to see the text, right? So we would like to see all these. Uh, if I go back to the web page and uh, reload it, I don't need to restart the application because I only changed the template. And I see hello world, which is the title and the text. And uh, a little bit to make, let's make uh, it a bit nicer. Let's put an H2 around the title and uh, let's put uh, a horizontal row in front of the uh, uh, blog entry. So here we are, there is this title part and then hello is the title of the post and well, now let's create another post just to make sure that it's still working. So uh, second post, more text, more text and uh, post. And here we are. So we have now a first post, a second post, and we have a blog engine. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to post on the Dreamer, there is actually Dreamer.org. So you can see it and you can go to pearldancer.org and download. It's cool. I like it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.